One of the data engineering challenges we often face is moving large volumes of data from on-premises systems to the cloud in a way that is both scalable and maintainable. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can implement a metadata-driven bug copying of tables from SQL Server to Fabric Lakehouse using Data Pipeline. So let's get started. If you're new to this channel, or not yet a subscriber, please click on the subscribe button because it doesn't hurt you. All right, so this is welcome to Fabric landing page. Now, the first thing we want to do is to download and install the data gateway, which allows you to connect to on-prems data sources like SQL Server. So to download, I'm going to click on this download and I can see data gateway. I'm going to click on that and a new tab is open automatically so we can see connect to on-premises data sources with a Power BI gateway. So you need to download this standard mode, not this personal. And once that's done, just follow the installation prompt and you need to sign in with your Microsoft Entra ID email that you are using in your Microsoft Fabric account. In my case, all that is already done. I'm going to come here, I can see the on-premises data gateway and I've got the August 2025 version 3002825 and we can see the gateway named cornerstone data gateway is online and ready to be used now we can come back to the microsoft fabric once the data gateway is sorted and we can create our workspace i'm just call this one demo 101 and i'm going to click on apply at the bottom so once that is provisioned i'm going to go ahead and create our lake house where we're going to be landing all the tables we're going to be creating in the SQL Server and we're going to use the data pipeline to perform the data in a bulk. I'm going to click on Lake House and let's call this one Sales and I'm going to click on Create and this is now created. That's so straightforward. I'm going to navigate to this SQL Server Management Studio and I've got this Sales Database and when I expand the tables, I've got no tables. So we want to create four tables, customers, product, date, and the fact sales table. So we can see I've got the create table statement with the appropriate column names and the data types. And we're going to be inserting all of this record into the customers table. And then we have the product table for creation. And they're going to be inserting these five records into the product table and then we move to the date and the fact sales table so i'm going to press ctrl a to select all the code and i'm going to click on execute and when i move this up a little bit under the messages i've got all the number of rows inserted into the respective tables which is really straightforward let's quickly just check the fact sales by writing a simple select star from fact sales and i'm going to select this code click on execute and we can see I've got eight records really amazing and I'm going to come to the sales database right click and refresh and when I click on the tables we can see the four tables amazing now our goal is to use the data pipeline to perform copying of all the tables in the sales database without using too many activities in data pipeline or over engineering this solution. So we need to find a way to access all the metadata of the tables in this sales schema. So to see the schema name and the table name, I'm just going to come here and I'm going to write select. And first, I want to see the table schema selected. And then we also want to select the table name. And we're going to get this from the information underscore schema dot tables and because we want to access all the base table i'm going to apply a where clause so i'm going to say where table type is equal to inside single quote base table so this is going to show the schemas and the table names and there we go we have the beam customer product date and fact sales that's really excellent. I'm going to copy this because I need this in the lookup activity of the data pipeline in order to be able to query all of this and see the same results. And then we're going to use the 4 H activity to perform iteration across all the values of the schema and the table names. 
coming from the local activity and they're going to use the copy data activity inside the for each activity to perform the data copying so once this is done i'm going to copy this and let's come back to the fabric platform i'm going to quickly go back to the workspace and we want to create the data pipeline so i'm going to search for pipeline and i'm going to maintain the name and in the pipeline canvas we can go ahead and use the lookup activity now before we do that you probably observe this new amazing features at the top i just discovered this today so this allows you to switch across the workloads open without having to struggle coming to this left hand side to be moving around and of course i can also see this little icon that differentiates each of the workloads this is a new amazing feature that i love so much and you probably want to check if you've got this also in your tenant so let's go ahead now we've got the pipeline canvas prepared i'm going to add the lookup activity to look up the list of tables that is coming from our source the sko server so i'm going to say lookup of all tables and i'm going to come to the settings in the settings i need to pick my connection i'm going to browse and i'm going to connect to sql server database and i can see that here click on that and i need the server name and the database name as well as the connection credentials so for the server name i'm going to come back to the ssms and i can see abiola david 01 as the server name so whatever you see is automatically your server name this is pre-configured for you sometime but sometime you can also change it by yourself so i'm going to navigate back and i'm going to type in abiola david 01 and i want to connect to the sales database and i'm going to show you how we can create the connection so i can give this a name but this is fine and very importantly we need to choose the on-premise cornerstone data gateway installed so click on that because this is going to establish connection to the on-premise SQL server and then for the authentication type i'm going to use sa and i'm going to type in my password and i'm going to toggle off this use encrypted connection and click on connect and this should give us proper connection if the data gateway is working and then all the information supplied are accurate so i'm just going to wait for some couple of moments and let's see the intermediate next step all right so this succeeded amazing i can click on this test connection just to verify that this is correct but i'm so sure this is actually successfully connected because i can see the sales database here. if there is a failure i'm going to see the failure automatically displayed so let's go on now for the use query I'm going to click on query because again we want to see the schema name as well as the table names i'm going to paste what i copied and i can click on this to expand so that we can see what i've got in there and once that's done i'm going to click on preview data all right so we can see the table schema and the table names absolutely accurate so i'm going to close this for now and we can also see that we've got a successful connection that's really brilliant I'm going to uncheck this first row only and then we can move this to one side now i'm going to quickly validate and run this data pipeline i'm going to save and run so this is now in progress and i'm going to close this for now i'm going to oh there we go this executed in just seven seconds absolutely awesome so i'm going to click on this output and this is what i'm talking about i'm going to expand and we can see we've got four counts of records we have four tables and four schemas and you can see we've got the key value pairs which is a form of json object so this is the key table schema and this is the value dbo and we also have the key value pairs and we can see the names of the tables and the dbo as the schema for all the four tables now all of these are stored inside this value result of the json object so we need these in order to be able to check the output of this lookup activity in the for each activity so make sure this is remembered and i'm going to close this for now so i'm going to come to the activities and i can see the for each here and let's just connect on success connect to the for each activity and uh, let's see for each for table iteration and i'm going to come to the settings i'm going to come to the items and i want to click on add dynamic content and i want to get the lookup of all the tables activity output dot value 
which houses all the four tables and the schema. So click on this. And this is what I'm talking about. I can see output. And I'm going to type in dot value. And this is where all the results are stored. I'm going to click on OK. And I want to go into the for each activity to now use the copy data to copy the data into the destination from the source. So click on this and I'm going to add to the canvas. So I'm going to come to the general and uh, let's maintain this copy data name and I'm going to come to the source tab and I'm going to choose the connection. Again, our source is SQL Server on premise. So I'm going to click on browse all and I want to choose SQL Server database. Again, I'm going to repeat the name of the database and the name of the server. So this is picked up automatically and I'm going to click on connect. Again, this is going to connect straight away. And in this case, I'm going to use table because again, we want to see all the list of the tables. And when you come here, you see we've got all the list of the four tables. We don't want to add code any table. So what I'm going to do is to click on this enter manually. And I'm going to specify DBO, which is the default database owner that I specified in the select table underscore schema. And then for the table name, I'm going to add a dynamic content. And then we want to get the table names that is coming from the for each activity iteration. So I've got this item dot, and then I need the table name property. And I'm going to click on OK. This is now sorted. I'm going to come to the destination. And again, we want to land the data in our lake house. And I'm going to choose the newly created lake house. I'm going to maintain the table as the root folder because we want to land as delta tables not as files and then for the table we don't have any table by default in lake houses so i'm going to use dynamic content to auto create the table so click inside there i can see add dynamic content at the bottom and again i want to get this item dot table name property and I'm going to click on OK. So this is now sorted. Now I can go to the mapping to check the mapping for each of the tables by providing the table names. And then I can do the mapping from the source to the destination board. This is automatically handled because we have the appropriate data type specified in the table creation in this method. So I'm not going to bother about the mapping. So I can go ahead and come outside this for each activity and then we can click on the run and i'm going to check it's a good practice to always validate it for any errors so in this case we've got no errors and i'm going to click on the run and i'm going to save and run the data pipeline so this is going to gather all my changes and i'm going to close this for now and you can see this is now positioned for execution so on that output i'm going to say the activity name the status the run start, the duration, current duration, output, the input. So in this case, the lookup of all table activity automatically executed because we've actually done that initially. So this succeeded. And then we've got the for each activity which perform iterations across the lookup activity based on the four number of tables we are copying dynamically. So we can see two of them succeeded. Uh, each of these copy data activity represents the customer product date and the fact sales table so because these two succeeded i'm so sure that the rest of the table the last thing is going to succeed so i'm going to click on this refresh just to try to trigger this and once we have the full copy data activity done then the last step is going to be the four age activity to also succeed so Again, I'm going to click on this. Of course, we could have actually added a new step to this. Maybe we want to add a notification upon failure upon Sussex so that we can know without having to struggle to determine the status of this data integration. Amazing. So the run succeeded and this is really brilliant. So what I'm going to do is to navigate back to the lake house. And that's the reason why I love this new functionality. So I don't have to struggle too much. And I'm going to click on this refresh. And now I'm going to quickly go to the workspace. And I'm going to go to the SQL analytics endpoints because it's actually much easier to see the content of the tables rather than from the lake house. So click on this SQL analytics endpoint. And then I'm going to 
come to the DBO and expand the tables and we can see the three tables I think one is still being away oh there we go we have the last one so let's see the dim customer click on the dim date and the dim product and the fact sales so there we go we have the eight records in the fact sales with the appropriate data types really excellent and then we have this dim customer dim date dim products absolutely cool so we've seen how we can copy multiple tables using the lookup for each and copy data activity without using too many activities or over engineering this solution i trust you enjoyed this video if you do please like share comment and follow me for more videos because there's a lot to come thank you for watching bye for now